This video is designed to show you all of the important features of your new Williams Sport Jet. It will also show you how to operate it safely and get the most out of your boat. The Sport Jet is a high performance boat, so before taking it out on the water, we recommend you have a minimum of RYA Level 2 or the ICC certificate. This is your owner's pack that comes with the boat. Inside, you'll find the USB owner's manual showing you how to safely operate your Sport Jet. We strongly recommend you read it before taking your boat out. The pack also contains a spare lanyard, ignition keys and other equipment manuals to help you maintain your boat, so remember to keep it in a safe place. The warranty registration needs to be filled in and sent back to us to validate your warranty. You can do this by post or on our website. To complete the form, you'll need your tender's hull identification number, HIN. This is located on the starboard side of the transom. Here's a quick overview of your new sport jet from bow to stern. Depending on which model you've purchased, the sport jet comes with a combination of storage including bow locker, passenger seat locker and dash storage. The navigation lights are located under the engine hatch and attach here and here. The Sport Jet comes with a removable ski pole stored under the engine hatch. It fits into the receiving socket here and locks into place by twisting it 180 degrees. The Sport Jet has two foot well drain bungs. To use them, simply pull up the lever and remove the bungs when you're at planing speed. This will cause the foot well to drain. Make sure you replace the bungs before your tender comes to a stop, otherwise the foot well will refill. There's also an automatic bilge pump. The Sport Jet has four lifting points, two at the bow and two at the stern. When lifting the boat, always make sure you use the optional Williams lifting straps. The fuel filler is located under the bow cushion. All our tenders come equipped with a fully automatic fire suppression system. This is located under the engine hatch here. The battery is located in the front left side of the engine bay. When you receive your tender from us, the battery will be disconnected. All you'll have to do is reconnect the two cables as shown, and the fuse box is located above the battery. If you want to tow your tender behind your parent yacht, it's very important to close the towing valve, otherwise the engine will flood, causing serious engine damage. The Sport Jet instrument cluster shows speed, RPM, heading, engine temperature and fuel burn. If any warning lights illuminate, please refer to your owner's manual. Before you operate your tender, it's important to be aware that the jet propulsion system in your sport jet is always producing thrust, even when idling in neutral. This results in the boat creeping forward slightly. There's a great benefit to this as the boat can be maneuvered at ultra low speed, unlike a conventional outboard and can be spun within its own length. To turn the tender while underway, you need to apply thrust as the boat has no rudder. If you're coasting along without thrust, your ability to steer will be severely reduced. To start your sport jet, first make sure the boat is in at least two feet of water. Visually check the bilge for water ingress, oil or fuel contamination. Also, check that the coolant level is safely between minimum and maximum. The sport jet does not have a separate battery isolator so you can turn the ignition key to the right to power the boat up. Run the bilge blower for two minutes to remove any residual fuel vapors. Check that no loose ropes or debris are in the water that could foul the jet pump intake. If anything does become entangled in the jet impeller, immediately stop the engine and visually inspect the intake grate. If you cannot remove the debris by hand, contact your closest Williams service agent. Failure to do so could result in serious engine damage. Make sure the shift lever is in the neutral position. Check that the safety lanyard is attached to both you and the boat. Now you're ready to press the start stop button and get the engine going. Pull the lanyard out to test that the emergency engine kill switch is working. If it is, you can put the lanyard back in, restart the engine and off you go.